you have been at the United Nations, the thorny issue of Israel and Palestine is always on the agenda of the Security Council and the General Assembly. Here we are in a situation where the conflict in the Middle East has escalated. Mm. You are familiar with the Oslo Accord. Uh, Norway played a very important role to ensure that uh, that agreement was signed in 1993. If you were to remind us what was the Oslo Accord all about, what did the agreement entail? Thank you very much for having me. Um, the Oslo Accord from uh, 1993 that was signed outside the, the White House lawn um, is, was about an agreement, a gradual agreement that should lead to the establishment of a Palestinian state and it led to the mutual recognition between Israel and the PLO at the time. The reason why I'm underlining the graduality is that it started with self-governing of, of the Palestinian in certain parts of the occupied territory, meaning Gaza and parts of the West Bank. The plan was that this should be gradually uh, expanded to a Palestinian state and that the Palestinian Authority should be gradually built up to take over that state. What happened, as we all know, is that that started to fault, faltering uh, after a few uh, years, because in my view, neither Israel nor the Palestinians at the time really stuck to their commitments according to, to the agreement. I think one of the things that, that happened and, and the reason why it, it didn't, didn't uh, go the way that was planned was that uh, in, in Israel, as you probably remember, uh, Prime Minister Rabin was shot and, and he, among his own, because he went into uh, uh, the agreement uh, uh, with the Palestinians, that meant that on the Israeli side, one didn't have that kind of a strong person, a strong commitment uh, on the Israeli side. Uh, on the Palestinian side, uh, even if it, they took upon themselves to renounce violence, there was gradually more uh, violent action and terrorism uh, taking place. So the confidence that that we thought would be built by gradually working together started uh, to, 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 um, to fall. Now, when we look at what's currently happening and looking back at that accord, can the accord still be resuscitated? I certainly think so, but uh, I think what we have learned from the Oslo uh, process is that one need to tackle all the issues at once. We need to find a way to establish a Palestinian state that is being recognized not only by Israel but by the whole international uh, community. And with that means that we have to find a way to deal with the borders of that state to deal with the issue of the refugees, to deal with the issues of Jerusalem. And there are, there have been so many attempts throughout, after uh, the Oslo Agreement, to try to find a way. So there are many drafts of an agreement in, in documents, in, in, the, in, in, uh, in, in many places. I mean, there is a way, but it needs a political will on both sides. And it, it needs to be two parties that really are both able and willing to enter into such an agreement. And right now, we certainly are not there. 
but there is no other alternative to the two-state solution. When you look at the leadership that you have right now, both in Palestine and in Israel, do you think the leaders of both nations can be trusted to really listen to the international community, to look at this issue honestly and objectively? Mm. I think that is, 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 is a real challenge right now because I think there has been a long history now with the leaders on both sides not trusting each other and with the situation as it is now on the Israeli side you have a very very difficult uh, uh, domestic political scene uh, with uh, with a lot of also opposition to the to the now uh, 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 prime minister there is a talk that there will have to be new election in in, in Israel uh, again on the Palestinian side you know we have the division between Gaza and the West Bank and with Hamas us and the Palestinian Authority. So I think on both sides there are challenges that will make it difficult f for, in the current situation, for the leaders to, 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 to get uh, um, to the table. People are dying in Gaza. Mm. Now, how can the international community help to ensure that the current conflict stops? I think the big mistake, in my view, what we all could be blamed on, is that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been put aside for too long. We haven't been focused on finding a solution to this conflict. Right now, our first priority will have to be to, uh, to, to stop the war. We n desperately need an immediate ceasefire we need to assure access for humanitarian assistance massively. We cannot any longer tolerate the suffering on the on 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 the on the on the Palestinian uh, side as a consequence of the war. So we need to do to do that, and then we need to get the parties to put the pressure on both sides to get back to the table and to find a solution. Uh, and I think uh, the whole international community with, uh, with, with, the, with the US, all of us now have to make sure that this will not happen again and that there will be a solution found to the conflict. On many occasions, we saw the Security Council dealing with this issue of ceasefire and humanitarian corridor and mm. aid having to be delivered in mm. Gaza. Mm. But the P5 members, they always either veto mm. the resolution mm. or having their own interest before thinking about what's happening in Palestine. How do you ensure that the P5 members in the Security Council do agree mm -hmm. and put aside their differences mm -hmm. as powerful nations? Yes, we are in a very unfortunate situation, both when it comes to the to, to, to the Russian aggression vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and know what's going on in, in Palestine, that there is disagreement and that the use of veto among the P5s has made the Security Council unable to take action in both uh, in, 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 in both uh, uh, conflicts and wars. Uh, we had just recently one finally uh, Security Council resolution uh, where, the, where the US did not veto but abstained. But I have to admit that we haven't seen much follow-up uh, or consequences of that resolution uh, on, on the war still going on in, in, in Gaza. So it is, we are in a very challenging situation 
that needs to be addressed still by all of us. And as a member, as an, an elected member for, for, for two years in the Security Council, we worked very hard. This was before the latest war, but we worked very hard also among the elected member of the Security Council because we are 10 elected members without veto, but as uh, if, if the elected member works together, mm -hmm. we are quite powerful. And you have to, uh, I think we have to make a notice of the fact that the last resolution that was, that was, uh, that went through was, uh, and came from the elected member of the Security Council. So there are ways to, we have to continue to put pressure on, on, or, or on the P5s as well, not to use veto in such dramatic situation mm. as we have both in Ukraine and in Gaza.